there is an ancient Indian mystic. His name is Kabir. Uh, he's oh, I read some of his stuff too. This yeah, week. yeah, very interesting. And he writes about desire. And he again, it's much longer than this, but he basically explains that there's f- four levels of desire. Mm-hmm. Many people have many. We'll call them shallow desires, right? You meet people like this. They want the next shiny thing. They want the next car. They want the next meal. They want the next girlfriend. They want the next boyfriend. So on and so forth. Many, 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 many desires, but they're all relatively shallow. He says those people will never find people, and again, we're all, I would say, somewhere in the gamut at times in each one of these four, but those people will never have great fulfillment because their desire is shallow. They fill it. They go on to the next one. They can never really come to true fulfillment. On the other hand, they also will never really come to great uh, uh, heartbreak because their desire was never shallow. So whether they get it doesn't, and move on or don't get it, on to the next, which is, you know, has a positive side. The next level are people who have lesser desires that are a little bit deeper. And again, and the, th- the third group of people who have very few desires, and they hold them very deeply. And the fourth level, which he spoke about, is somebody who has only one desire. That one desire is what I would call, and again, without this is where we get really deep, a desire for what we call a connection to the light of the Creator, or in other terms, to the universe, to the force that makes this universe, um, uh, you know, that that phrase, you know, uh, being at one with the universe, which is kind of cliche at this point. And he explains that really ultimate fulfillment can only come from the ultimate singular desire. So, and I think I would say that that most of us should be living between the third and fourth group, meaning a few very important desires, and hopefully at times, a singular desire. So I what I would say is this, so so I think this is a really important... But that's point. why people have to be able to decipher what their desires are and where they're coming from. But more importantly, I would say, create a... Well, why is my thing? <laughs> create... <laughs> 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 create a hierarchy of desires. So if you ask me... Yes, and ones that you take more seriously and invest in more, exactly. and others you don't. You can still derive pleasure from exactly. them. Exactly. And you're meant to, I think. So if I, if you ask me for a list of my desires, I can give you a list of 10,000 things that I desire. I desire this pen, I desire this cup of tea, I desire... You know, I have a long list. But then if you ask me what are my most important desires, I would certainly put at the top of that uh, my connection to the light of the Creator, and then you, number two, <laughs> and then and then so on. So I would say, do I have what? How, what are my core desires? Three or four. And it's also good to have the other ten thousand ones. 